Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about substituting through the midline. The midline is the half field line across the center of the field. Substituting through the midline is a way to more efficiently get your personnel on and off the field. And if done correctly, you can substitute your players before your opponent has had an opportunity to sub their own. Um, before we get into using the midline for substitutions, it's important to understand a few key concepts first. Um, we'll go over offsides and when it's called, how exchanges at the midline are handled, and how substitutions through the box are handled. Offsides rules define the number of players allowed on each side of the field. The offensive team is allowed six attacking players. This is generally comprised of three attackmen and three offensive midfielders. When defending, the defensive team is allowed seven players. This is three defensemen covering the three attackmen and then um, two defensive midfielders and a long stick midfielder covering the three offensive midfielders. On the back side of the field, you'll have the three attackmen for the defending team and the three defensemen for the attacking team. Now, because offensively you're only allowed six players, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, a defenseman cannot cross over the midline um, into the offensive zone without being called for offsides. Now, if you did want to send a defenseman over the field, um, what would need to happen would be a midfielder would have to either cross the midfield line in, in order for this defenseman to move across the field, or this midfielder could alternatively substitute off the field, opening up a space on the offensive side of the field to send in a, uh, another uh, blue player. Now, let's say, let's say a defenseman does inadvertently come over the midline and creates a offsides situation. So because the blue team is in possession of the ball, uh, the play would immediately end and the refs would call offsides and the ball would be turned over to the red team uh, to clear the ball. Um, if it was not a blue player that went offsides, but instead it was a red team um, attackman that stepped offsides because the blue team has possession of the ball, uh, they would be allowed to finish the possession. The refs would throw a flag and the play would um, not be stopped until either uh, a red player recovered the ball, uh, the ball was shot out of bounds, or the um, ball uh, was um, uh, thrown away out of bounds. Um, in any of those scenarios, they would uh, blow the whistle and then the penalty for offsides um, would, uh, would be awarded against the attackmen. So in this scenario, um, you know, attackmen, if you step over the midline and the referee uh, throws a flag and you recognize that it was because you stepped over the midline, do not just step back on sides and wait for the play to end. Once you've already committed an offsides penalty, you cannot be called for, you know, a further offsides penalty. So it's more advantageous for you to go and try to double the ball while the rest of uh, your team pushes out on their players so we get an opportunity to try to get a two-on-one takeaway to kill the play. Otherwise, if you stay back, you're giving the blue team a free opportunity um, to uh, run their offense and go to the goal without any risk, right? There's, uh, if they shoot 
out of bounds or they throw the ball away. It just ends the play and it goes right back to the blue team on their man up. So make sure if you've committed that penalty, go double the ball, try to get possession of the ball or force a throw away to end the play and then you will go serve your penalty. Okay, let's discuss exchanges across the midline. So if you wanted to send one of your players from the defensive side of the field to your offensive side of the field, uh, in order to avoid offsides, you must wait for your teammate to cross over the midline prior to you stepping over into the offensive zone, right? Doing this avoids any situation where you have Again, seven players in the offensive zone. So you must wait until he crosses completely over the midline before you are able to step across. Now the last piece is substituting through the box. So most in-game substitutions are handled through the box. The box is the line between the two box cones at either bench, either team bench. So um, in order to substitute, let's say we want to substitute this midfielder off the field, he would have to work his way over to the box and step completely off the field prior to his teammate being able to step onto the field for a clean exchange and substitution. Now, those are all the pieces needed to understand subbing through the midline. So let's go over another example where instead of substituting through the box, it's more advantageous to substitute through the midline. So let's say we want to substitute this far midfielder off the field. Right. In the, as, as shown in the last example, he would have to make his way all the way across the field to the box to be able to exchange with his teammate. Right. Now, where substituting through the midline is more advantageous is it's a shorter distance for this midi to travel. And it's a pretty easy exchange um, um, to, to, to figure out how the mechanism works. So you send the closest defensive um, pole to the box in an exchange for the player that you want to send on to the field. So after that exchange, this midfielder only has to make his way up to the midline in order to get our new personnel onto the field and into the offensive set. So he'll work his way up to the midline and exchange just like we talked about previously with the midline exchange in order to um, uh, keep the proper number of players on the offensive side of the field. So where this saves us time is all of these things can happen in parallel. Right, So if we call for a substitution here, this defenseman can start working his way to the box as this midi is working his way up to the midline, and they can get their exchange onto the field as he steps over the midline, and our new personnel is on to the offensive side of the field. At this point, um, uh, this player can step into the play, and this midi will proceed to make his way off to the sideline, and we'll get our defensive pull right back onto the field, and we're good to go. Now, one little nuance here. If, let me reset things real quick. If this defenseman comes to the box for the exchange, this new midi doesn't necessarily need to step on to this side of the field. He can work his way down towards the, um, the cone closest to the offensive side of the field and wait for this midfielder to cross the midline. As soon as he crosses the midline, we now only have 
five players in the offensive zone, and he can step right onto the field, opposed to running through the midline. This is still a form of substituting off through the midline, but it's just a little nuance that allows um, this player to step onto the offensive side of the field closer to the ball and the goal, opposed to coming across and in. Now, let's go through one more example. So let's say, let's say the blue team has just carried this ball up the field. They just got a turnover and they pushed up the field. Red team crashed into the hole, marked up, there was no fast break, but this midfielder did a lot of the work in carrying the ball up and, and he's pretty tired. And let's say, let's say this attackman ended up being, you know, pressed out and pretty covered as he was coming up. So he worked his way pretty deep up the field with the ball um, with um, this midfielder uh, defending him, right? And let's say this attack was able to pop open. He's finally able to get rid of the ball. So in this scenario, right, we're going to want to start our substitutions through the midline. So as the ball went from the defensive zone to the offensive zone, this defender is going to work his way to the box so we can sub, he'll step off for our midi that we want to get onto the field and into the offensive zone, and he'll make his way towards the middle of the field, right? Now, he can exchange with any player that is called, right? We can call any of these middies up to the midline to exchange for him. But let's say in this scenario, this midi is extremely tired after clearing the ball, and we want to get him off the field, and we feel more comfortable with these other middies handling the ball because they have fresher legs if the, if the ball moves around to them, right? So we're calling for this midi to come off the field. Now... In this situation, right, it kind of shows how it's not always the most advantageous to run through the midline, right? Now, this midi is waiting for a situation where there are five players in the offensive zone for him to be able to step in. So it doesn't really make sense for this midi to run all the way up to the midline to exchange, right? He should be running to the closest point on the field to allow this midfielder to step into the offensive zone. So for him, it's going to be the closest box cone. If he sprints to the closest box cone and steps off, it now allows for this midi to step into the offensive zone, right? And once, once he steps in, we're then able to send this defenseman right back in to cover his attackman. And that is it. That is substituting through the midline. Um, this is something that you will uh, certainly use in every lacrosse game that you play. And you will learn, you know, nuances of how this can be used to uh, improve scoring opportunities, keep opposing players on the field, and just most effectively get your personnel uh, where they need to be. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, please just shoot them into the comments and I'll try to get get to them as uh, as best as I can. And yeah, if you have any feedback, I'm of course willing to hear that as well. But have a good rest of your day.